the biggest issue was saving student representation. The then Conservative government with John Major and uh, the then Education Secretary tried to put a bill through Parliament that would stop it being permissible to have student representatives, so the political side of student unions and NUS. I think the big thing that I did was save NUS. Um, uh, the education reform bill at the time would have basically meant the end of the federation um, and it would have meant the end of the, the, the whole sort of student representation side of student unions. Uh, and although I was the first non-university president of the National Union of Students, I did a degree, I was at Loughborough College of Art and Design, but I'd been at uh, an FE college before, and although the National Union has a long and august history, it was uh, very represented initially by the big old universities, and it was through the growth in polytechnics and then the growth in FE colleges that gradually the huge expansion in NUS uh, came, and we were very proud of that. But undoubtedly, the, the, there were sort of several issues that always, no matter which president you spoke to, the big issue was always student finance. And it ebbed and it flowed through the decades in terms of what various governments were trying to do to it, or education reform acts. And there was also a process of change and reform of the National Union itself. Um, as the economics changed, uh, so did um, our financial situation. And therefore, we had to reform and adapt. So when I was president, um, uh, we'd just undergone, through Stephen Twig, a huge reform process where we changed how many conferences we had, for example. I'm a dyslexic art student with two O-levels and I went to art college despite uh, being told that my disability was my own problem and I had to deal with it myself. I was a good enough artist to get in but they wouldn't help me with uh, my disability. And so when the Conservative government of the day decided they were going to shut art colleges, independent freestanding art colleges, I felt so motivated that I had a social obligation to keep that door open for people like me who didn't have traditional qualifications but were good at certain things. And my opportunity to go to do a degree at Loughborough was the gateway to a different chance for me. Both my parents were unemployed and we were the first generation in our family to go to university. And I felt I had an obligation to therefore understand education policy, to get involved and to make sure that this opportunity wasn't denied other people. Um, one of the brilliant things about being involved in either a student union or the National Union of Students is that you gain lots of other experiences. It's not just about student politics and representing students to either the university or, or college authorities or to the government. But it's also about running your own affairs. You um, have to become an employer. You have to create money to therefore provide student services. And that's how student services began. And it gives you a, a good degree of management and financial net that is hard to come by at that age. Um, and it does give you huge experiences that I think that everybody that's been involved in either NUS services um, and, and students get involved at the, the, univer the student union level as well as the, at the NUS level, um, that everybody I think would agree that it's one of the, uh, it adds to the uniqueness of the experience of getting involved in student politics. It makes you ultimately far more employable. When I went to the House of Commons, I discovered that my experience at NUS meant that I was far more used to making decisions than lots of my colleagues because I'd been given the responsibility very, very early on to make huge decisions, whether it was when I was at Loughborough Students' Union or whether it was when I was at NUS. Uh, the most precious memory is being invited by the outgoing permanent secretary of the, sec of the Department for Education. I was invited to his retirement party at the department and the reason I was invited was because I was invited to do a private negotiation with Baroness Blanche, who by that time was running the education department. And so gradually the sort of very wise civil servants that had been um, very helpful and supportive 
engineered myself and the Baroness talking, of which I said, these are the things that uh, we would consider supporting if you were so minded to introduce them into your bill, because it was already in the House of Lords. And uh, so um, uh, we basically sent over, so she said, well, will you send them over? So on NUS Heady Paper, we sent a sheet of A4 with all the reforms that we would support in their bill. The next day I was asked at my leisure to come to the department to visit the Baroness and to bring my Chief of Staff, um, uh, the General Manager. And so we set an appointment, we came, and the whole array of the ministerial team and the civil servants were there. There must have been, I don't know how many crammed into the room. Which point, she pushed a sheet of paper across the table with the department's heading on it and not NUS's, and every single one of our proposals was presented as a government amendment to their bill. That was my favourite moment. Being a president of the National Union of Students, you were a national political figure. NUS is one of the most important political entities in, in Britain. And it uh, is a very, very, very unique experience that means that you become very much more politically experienced, very uh, much younger than most people. So in terms of the national transition, you uh, you know, I went to work for Saatchi and Saatchi after I left NUS for three years. So I worked on the national and international political scene, running campaigns for multinationals or charities, uh, advising them about politics. Um, but as always, when you go into a very well established institution like the House of Commons, it's a huge culture shock. Nothing can really prepare you for it because whatever you think it is like on the outside, it is absolutely nothing like it on the inside. Oh, we couldn't stop grinning. Mm -hmm. We just couldn't stop grinning. It was pinching yourself. Do we believe we're mm -hmm. here? Have I done it? I mean, People from, you know, people like me don't become members of parliament, and, you know, unemployed parents, lower working class, dyslexic, 2 levels, artists. I mean, it's not exactly your normal uh, uh, member of parliament profile. Then being, you know, under the age of 30. I mean, it was just such a historic moment because so many of us were so young. So many, so many of us were from very, very, very different backgrounds. And Parliament, as one of my constituents said, started to look like them. They started to think it was about them. So, it, I mean, it was a huge, huge honour. And, uh, I mean, it was an amazing experience. Uh, probably too much to say in a short interview. I think that one of the things that still makes me proudest is what we did in terms of uh, um, uh, uh, gay marriage. Um, uh, I, it's very, very rare that a government actually gets to bring joy, I mean literal joy, into people's lives. And just that, there's very, very few pieces of legislation in history that you can genuinely say bring joy. And when I could see some of my oldest friends enter into civil partnerships, and it was, I know it seems really odd and everybody's talking about war and peace and education changes and everything, but it's very, very rare that any government can ever do anything like that. And for me, it just sticks in my mind. There are loads of other things that I thought were huge and immense and are undervalued at the moment and hopefully as time will pass will be more valued. But for me, that was a personal uh, political uh, high point. Uh, loads of things. <laughs> Absolutely loads of things. Two lists. I think it's very... I, I don't like people who don't think that they make mistakes or can't improve. I think that you can always... Um, you can always look back and think that what you could have done better, absolutely and utterly. Would I change any of it? Not a jot. I have had the most charmed life where I got to be president of the National Union of Students, which I still think is one of the greatest honours and experiences anybody could ever have. To get to work with the quality and level of professional staff and other young, talented people throughout the country is, it cannot be underestimated in terms of its importance. I 
don't know what you mean by reach the point in a sense that uh, um, I think that the, the challenge is uh, always about uh, ensuring that the student experience is uh, the best experience that it can possibly be and that you have a social conscience for those students that are yet to come. And it's making sure that you have the you you weigh the responsibility of both both because um, you have the power to do something. You have a voice. Um, it's amazing how people think that they are powerless, and you're only as powerless as you make yourself. And NUS teaches you that the only way you change things is by changing your own behaviour and doing things yourself. And that's how social change movements happen. Um, I think NUS's challenges are always to help students find their own voice. The problems may change, but in the end they're broadly about how education is delivered and what it costs, and where students fit in that process. Um, and as long as you are as strong as you can be at teaching people how to express their voice, and to facilitating the expression of that voice. That's, that, that, for me, is what NUS is all about. It's about student representation. To make sure it goes from strength to strength, uh, both as an employer, but also in terms of the mission. I genuinely believe that Israel is a metaphor for Britain, everybody who believes in freedom uh, and democracy, and I think our futures are indelibly tied. Um, and I genuinely have a passion for making people realise that you can be pro-Palestinian and pro-Israeli. You can be uh, pro-Muslim and pro-Jew. Um, I totally and utterly refute the thesis that means that you are either or. And I think that we have to be on the side of the progressives. Um, and I have never allowed anybody to pick my friends for me and resolutely refuse to. I think that um, uh, we absolutely need to row back the tide where there is a fashion that makes people believe that one side is good and one side is bad. The bottom line is that we want peace and security for everybody. And I believe that we all have a duty to do something for others. Um, I was brought up with one simple principle. I'm not religious, but I do have a, a personal set of beliefs, and that is do as you would be done by. And I think that a lot of the way that we view the world is, on the whole, hypocritical, because actually we ask other people to either put up with things or do things that, in the end, if we were suffering in their circumstance, we would not do ourselves. And so I hope in some small way what we do here is that we get people to be just a tiny bit more honest and a tiny bit more realistic. But I will never lose my idealism and I hope I'm always a bit of a, uh, an idealist.